Good evening, guys. Welcome to Life Apollos. Happy to have you here, as always. Uh, pretty serious uh, and big news to discuss tonight concerning the Omi and the Hellcat. We are going to cover some other news afterward, but how do we not talk about what's going on there first? Now, before we begin, guys, if you appreciate being kept in the know of what's going on, if you like up-to-the-minute news like we're serving you right now, make sure to sub to our channel. Help us get to 300,000 subscribers. It's been a goal of mine for some time, and we, uh, we do this pretty much every day. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, Beard Nation, welcome to your news of the day. All right, guys, jumping into our main headline story of the day, and one of the biggest pieces of news to hit the automotive community uh, in years, if I were to say. We've covered a lot of news events uh, over the last, like, three or four years, and this is definitely one of the biggest. Okay, so here's the deal, guys. Uh, just one hour ago, this is as breaking news as we can possibly bring you, Omi and a Hellcat took to his YouTube channel uh, and uploaded a video called Omi and a Hellcat is Guilty, uh, showing a logo of the FBI. So before we discuss anything about that video, and there is a lot to go over, I want to give you guys some quick background knowledge in case you weren't paying attention to the many sort of trials and tribulations of the Omi and a Hellcat channel over the last two plus years. Now, here's what's crazy, guys. Uh, the initial raid that happened with the FBI and the feds uh, with Omi and Hellcat actually took place over two years ago. That was when we initially reported it. It was a late night report, absolutely crazy. Omi did a big live feed during that evening talking about how the feds came and took everything. And from then on, everything was sort of walking on eggshells. And it wasn't until about four months ago that a second raid took place uh, where they seized more assets from Omi a Hellcat, he was arrested, led away in handcuffs. So there were two separate raids over the course of the last two plus years. And all the while this is happening, guys, uh, Omina Hellcat's uh, social media presence skyrockets, getting hundreds of thousands of new subscribers. Uh, he's able to launch like brand new lines of clothing, of shoes. All this happened during the course and in between all of these raids. Now, it wasn't until about four months ago that we actually had a number of high profile publications like The Hill and so many others, New York Times, actually give us an idea of what Omina Hellcat would be facing once this sort of uh, federal prosecution, the trial actually started going through. So four months ago, we were told that Omina Hellcat, a real name Bill Carrasquillo, uh, is facing or maybe was facing, depending on sort of what happened in today's video, 514 years in prison. Uh, a lot of people commented on this when it came out. Uh, Whistle and Diesel, I believe, was like flabbergasted by the number and all of these, uh, or at least a good chunk of them, had to do with federal piracy and some sort of tax charges as well. The Hill did a great job summarizing this, was the first to find out the sort of the full 514 year count, uh, saying Carrasquillo was arrested on September 21st and is charged with one count of conspiracy to commit copyright infringement and related offenses, 19 counts of public performance of a protected work, four counts of access to vice fraud, six counts of wire fraud, three counts of making false statements to a bank among a litany of other federal crimes. So even the Hill didn't have the entirety of the list of what he was being charged for, uh, but it was enough to accumulate 514 years worth of charges. And honestly, you know, if I was in his shoes, that's a terrifying prospect to be sort of looking down for a number of years uh, while things supposedly came to trial. And basically, uh, everything has been very silent, no new information about what's going on until today's video, uh, where near the end of the the video, he basically does a number of statements all in a row, but the most important one we're going to show you right now, where he tells everyone that he's pleading guilty. Watch this. Um, I'm letting you guys know that I'm pleading guilty. Um, long talks with my attorney, and um, it's the best option, you know. Everyone already pleaded out, already pleading guilty on my case. Um, makes no sense. Plus, you know, it's an acceptance, it's an acceptance of, of responsibility for me. He also says that he's going to be losing all of his houses, his properties, all of his cars, the jewelry. Uh, and this makes me think a couple of things. One, um, the fact that he said he's pleading guilty on advice of counsel means a couple of things. One, he might be trying to find a more lenient sentence uh, by not having to go to trial and just pleading guilty to the charges in hopes that he will not get 514 years, which is obviously like a death sentence in prison. Um, it could be part of a plea deal as well. Now, I watched the, the sort of explanation 
education portion of his video, I didn't hear the term plea deal, if I remember correctly. So it's possible that's still out there, but I'm not 100% positive. Um, no uh, outlets, no publications have written about this yet. We're sort of just talking about it on the fly the best that we can. I would imagine that probably a plea deal is taking place for him to plead guilty on this sort of litany of federal crimes that will hopefully reduce his prison sentence down to something much more manageable. The most important question here obviously is, is uh, Omina Hellcat going to spend uh, any sort of time in prison? Uh, I said it when this initial report came out, I think the feds were trying to make an example out of him for sort of future people that would, you know, do piracy in any form. Uh, otherwise, why go after 500 14 years worth. Um, even if he's pleading guilty, which it sounds like he is on the majority of the crimes on advice of counsel, I would imagine he's still going to spend some time in prison, uh, but I'm not like a legal expert, so I couldn't tell you how many years I think he's going to get. Uh, if I had to guess, to put a number on it, I'd say less than 10 at this particular point. Uh, but if any of you guys are legal experts out there and you have an idea of sort of what this could be congealed down into, feel free to comment below. Now, a number of other interesting things happen in this Omina Hellcat video where he talks about, you know, pleading guilty for this entirety of time. Uh, he said he didn't pay his taxes and that ignorance was not an excuse. That might be a good chunk of why he might be going to prison, uh, sort of tax fraud or tax evasion. Uh, I'm not entirely certain on which charges he might be discussing here. Uh, one of the weirdest parts of the entire video, in my opinion, is how he came to the conclusion that what he was doing for all these years where he made, like, 30 to 50 million dollars, uh, why he decided that was wrong in retrospect. He said he was watching Disney Plus and there was sort of an inside like the animators studio discussing Pixar and seeing all the people at work, uh, you know, making a film, taking five years out of their life to make one film. That's what made him realize that all the stuff that he was doing was wrong according to his words. And there are some other parts afterward in the video where it just says that like what he did was illegal and that he was just sort of being proud during this time, uh, pushing a false narrative that everything that he was doing was okay. So yeah, that is the, the majority of what's going on with Omina Hellcat right now. I would imagine we're gonna see follow-ups by New York Times, The Hill, and so many other publications uh, because this is the first that we have heard uh, about the Omina Hellcat federal case uh, since about four months ago. Uh, there was an initial plea deal, if I remember correctly, offered to him, and I want to say that he said no to at the time for 17 and a half years. Um, so if that gives us any indication that he said no to 17 and a half years at that particular time, it's possible that it's more. I can't imagine they would offer something that would be a worse deal for him moving forward, uh, but you really don't know. The last thing I'm gonna leave you with about the Omen Hellcat video is actually a statement that he put underneath his YouTube video saying, today I decided to plead guilty. I'm sorry to all my fans I let down. I hope and pray you guys stay safe and listen to my advices. I I've been through so much in life, I just want to be a positive role model and steer everyone in the correct way. I want to thank you guys for always believing in me. So obviously there is a ton of information to digest there. We're doing our best to bring you guys everything that we have right away and let you guys make your own decisions about whether you think it's fair, how much time you think you'll serve in prison, if any, uh, put in the comments below guys. But definitely one of the craziest things to hit, to hit any part of the automotive uh, YouTube sphere in many, many years. Leave your comments and thoughts in the comment section below. Okay. Uh, I always have trouble uh, sort of transferring from one really serious story to like normal news, but I'm doing my best. We're gonna talk about Drag Time's latest video, guys. Uh, Lucid Air versus Tycon, uh, 1,111 horsepower Lucid Air versus Porsche Tycon Turbo S, quarter mile drag and roll races. Uh, gotta hand it to Lucid, man. They are just killing it with their most recent offering. Uh, it's got more power than the Plaid, if I remember correctly, but not quite as fast, but still an incredible achievement. It just shows you guys where the, the EV world is gonna be going. Um, in a couple years, I would not be surprised to see street cars having easily 1,500 horsepower at their fingertips with all-wheel drive and electric power. Let me know what you guys thought about the race. Drag time's killing it as usual. Still my go-to place for everything sort of street-related 
related drag time performance. Gotta hand it to Kid in a Sweet Shop, guys, driving the very first Jaguar XJ220, uh, one of the most incredible supercars ever made uh, when I was a kid. This was like the car that I just lost my mind over. I'm like, someday, someday I would love to have something like that. Um, one of the original sort of batches of like the 90s supercars, incredible vehicle. Go check it out, guys. Fantastic channel. Doesn't put out a ton of videos, but when they do, they're always super special. Now, I gotta hand it to Ted Ward, guys. His latest video, uh, it might make a believer out of you on this particular car. 2022 Acura NSX Type S Night Drive at Daytona. So, the Acura NSX, the new version. Uh, a lot of people weren't really sure about it. I think it's gained a bigger following over time. Uh, I've always loved the design. I think they could have been more powerful than they were released at. Uh, the Type S is a crazy version of said car if you've never seen it. And Ted Boy does a great job of doing POV driving videos and is just uh, very, very good at what he does. Go check it out, guys. Ted Ward, a great channel to add to your subscription list. And our final video of the day, guys, Stefan Lewis, I ruined my my Corvette. Um, he's a Utah crew member. He does fantastic cinematics. He's got his own sort of eclectic style in the automotive world and is doing a bang up job every single week. Go follow Stefan Lewis, guys. You'll be happy you did. And folks, all I've got for you guys today. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, feeling really good. Things are, uh, they're all coming down into place. Thank you guys so much. Uh, make sure to sub the channel if you love automotive and supercar community news and to be kept in the know. Do not miss out, guys. There are so many things that happen in the automotive community that that I would imagine you'd like to know about. And a lot of the time you don't hear about it unless we talk about it here. That's our job. That's what we do every single day. And you guys have been wonderful enough to support us, uh, Megan and I. So thanks so much. Have a great day. We'll catch you later. Bye.